Here's Nikki. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today I am pleased and proud to announce the first salt-free seasoning that, in my opinion, actually tastes like salt. It's made by local spicery. It's called Salacious, kind of a cute name. And let me tell you about how this started to happen. So I don't know how many years ago it was, but I heard about this pepperoni spice. I heard about this small little boutique spice shop. It's in Tiburon in Marysville, California called Local Spicery. And they had a seasoning called pepperoni spice. And it intrigued me because although I've been vegan for 45 years and salt-free for about 15, I thought, wow, that sounds amazing. So I called up and I said, hey, you know, can you send me just a really small sample? And if I like it, I'll tell everybody. Well, I didn't like it. I loved it because it actually tastes like pepperoni. You can put it on mushrooms and air fry them and potatoes and it's delicious. And then I got to know the proprietor, Nick DeVorn of Local Spicery and his lovely wife, Evelyn. And I actually got to visit both their shops and their stuff's amazing because it's small batch. It's, I mean, you know, look, everybody wants to save money and go to Costco and get like a five pound thing of, I don't know, whatever. That's cool. But you know, quality does matter, especially if you're on an SOS free or salt oil, sugar free diet. And this is what's going to make the food pop. It's going to make it delicious. And he has so many clever blends like his umami mommy bada bing broth where you don't need to keep buying box broth or the tosca de la soul or his gingerbread spice i mean it's top quality stuff i've been saying to nick for years i'm like come on i need a bacon spice i need a bacon spice and he's like i don't know it, it, he doesn't have the bacon spice yet but i think this is going to be the first step so when i moved from the desert to northern california in may my very first guest just a few days after I moved here, I had my first dinner party with Nick from Local Spicery and Thomas from California Balsamic. And he brought me this and he said, I couldn't, I, mean, I, haven't, I haven't been able to say anything about this for six weeks. And it's amazing because it doesn't have weird stuff in it that people don't want. Now, listen, I, anytime you want to avoid salt, to me, that's a good thing. And I, I support and love all the salt-free seasonings. I still use Benson's Table Tasty. I like it. I love the spices from Well Your World. Problem is a lot of them have black pepper to which I'm allergic but really none of them actually taste like salt to me, but this does. We're going to figure out how he did it, what's in it. Nothing weird, no citric acid, no nutritional yeast. It's just seasoning. So please welcome to the show, Nick DeVoren. How you doing? Hey, AJ, it's great to see you. What a beautiful day. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're quite clever. You're kind of like the Harry Potter of salt-free seasonings, <laughs> like a little bit of a wizard, the way you mix things together. You know, it's funny. Sometimes uh, things just come to me and you can you can whip them out quickly. Like the, the pepperoni actually was a request by a chef. I got a, a, a text from him at two o'clock in the morning. And by early the next morning, I had it completely done. It first time it was perfect. As yeah, you know, it's amazing. You when, know, you, when you got it, you got it, you know. The, the salt substitute has been really, really hard for me. Uh, but it, but, you know, I'm like a dog with a bone once you. Once you uh, set me on a challenge, I never stop. And, uh, you know, I think my biggest reticence towards a, a salt substitute to, you know, I am not one of those guys that likes any kind of food where you have to put the word vegan in front of it as a modifier, you know, vegan, bacon, vegan, cheese, vegan, whatever. If it's cheese, it's cheese. And, uh, you know, if it's salt, it's salt. And I always thought that, that uh, you know, to really come up with something that would substitute for salt, that would be totally natural because, you know, we are we are totally, you know, in our hearts committed to uh, the, what is the name of your book? Unprocessed. We like unprocessed foods. We like our foods to be made out of foods. Uh, we do occasionally make a, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put a little bit of, we have one blend, we put a little bit of citric acid in. I'm about to get it out, actually. Uh, but uh, I really just like to work with food. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, the inspiration, I mean, the original inspiration was a challenge by Chef AJ, uh, but we were playing around with some Middle Eastern blends and, uh, you know, one of which we're going to be releasing very, very soon. And, uh, you know, a very traditional uh, spice used in the Middle East is, uh, is uh, 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 sumac, which is a, a brilliant red berry. In fact, the word sumac, uh, it's the Aramaic word for red. Uh, so it's just a beautiful red berry that's uh, that's dried and uh, then milled into a powder. 
and it has it's all usually described as having a, a very very citrusy flavor you know it's, it's lemony you can actually use it in place of lemon in in uh, in recipes but see the thing about I love your sumac and I um you know, a Dr. Nikki Davis uh, had been telling me about sumac for the longest time, and I don't know why I, what was my reticence, but sumac's delicious, by the way. It yeah. really, it makes things pop, especially if you're salt-free. So, and if you have, and if you are salt-free, you have to be careful with your sumac, because most sumac is actually processed with salt in the Middle East. And, uh, you know, it's very hard for us to find the, uh, the unsalted, but ours is organically grown and not processed with salt in any way. The, uh, the, the wonderful thing with sumac, though, in terms of a, of a salt substitute is, you know, based on the science, the, uh, uh, you know, in our mouth, we taste salt uh, on the back and on the sides of the mouth. And that's the exact same place where we taste uh, sour. And it's also where we taste umami. So a lot of times with salt substitutes, you'll find that they try to load it up with umami flavors and load it up with, with sour flavors, which is why people like to put citric acid uh, in because it's it's really sour and it, and it hits you right away. But the sumac, because it comes from a berry, it's got this, this you know, in addition to the sour, it's got these great berry tones, which give you, you know, the sweet, the sour, and they kind of develop, develop a complexity, which, uh, you know, starts to lead to its own umami uh, on its own. Uh, uh, so we took the, we took the, uh, the sumac and we started to just kind of layer in some umami flavors uh, behind it. And, you know, why, why umami? Well, the first reason is what I told you, because we taste umami in the same parts of the mouth as we taste salt. But the other thing about salt is uh, when, you, when you salt your food, when you're cooking, it breaks down fats. And when it breaks down fats, it releases umami aromas. You know, a, a, a chef just by smell can tell you if a dish is undersalted or oversalted. And, it's, you know, salt is non-aromatic there's no smell to it whatsoever but it's it's the release of those umami uh, uh aromas that come out so so uh uh behind the uh the sumac we layer some umami flavors we put some some uh some organic onion uh uh some some of our our sun-dried tomato because i want it to play off of the berry tones of the sumac you know keep it keep it bright keep it a little bit sweet um some uh, some mustard, uh, which gives it kind of a, a tangy grounding, you know, a little bit of an acidic flavor to it, uh, a little bit of cumin, uh, some thyme. Uh, and, you know, the other star in this blend besides the sumac is uh, uh, kombu. Um, and there's a fair amount of kombu that we put in here. And, you know, why kombu? Well, you know, kombu is the flavor that was originally used to define umami. Uh, you know, umami, it's a Japanese word that, uh, that means a pleasant flavor. And it's, it is usually used to describe the flavor of, uh, of dashi kombu. Uh, you know, here we've, uh, we're all familiar with MSG, which, is, which was first distilled from dashi kombu, from this, this beautiful, beautiful plant that's grown in the sea. Um, uh, so it's, uh, it's a great flavor. Um, you know, uh, but in addition to a great flavor, one of the things I like about it is it's really, really healthy for you. And everything that's in it has, uh, you know, everything brings its own, uh, you know, its, its own portfolio to the table of what it does for you and for your health. But, you know, the big winners in this blend is, uh, you know, sumac itself is, uh, is very high in antioxidants, particularly vitamin C. Um, uh, and believe, there's actually a lot of research that's going on right now uh, on sumac specifically uh, by pharmaceutical companies because there's some indications that it might have some very powerful pharmaceutical qualities. Uh, one of the most intriguing to me, and it's uh, the research is just starting. There's only one study that I know of, and it's it's uh, it's only been conducted at the uh, at the uh, animal research level. Um, but what they're they're finding is uh, Based on this first study, it looks like uh, uh, sumac actually has qualities that uh, that can stimulate uh, the regeneration of bone, and uh, could be a, a a big plus for people who are you know osteoporotic and, and uh, looking to build up their bone density. Interestingly, the uh, uh, the kombu also has uh, uh, 
you know, high quantities of calcium in addition to, uh, to the uh, iron that it's, that it's famous for and the iodine as well. So by eating our, uh, the, the salacious on your, on your food, you're not only getting a really delicious food flavor. It's not like an, like an alien that, that, uh, that combines with your foods. It, it really combine, combines well with anything that, that you're cooking, but it's tremendously, tremendously helpful. That's incredible. Uh, some questions. Uh, are your spices kosher certified? They're not. Um, almost all of them uh, come to us with a kosher certification, but we don't currently have a contract to, to maintain the certification. Great. Thank you. And let's see, I saw another question. Uh, well, Karen says she's looking forward to a good salt substitute. Uh, I saw a question moved away. Oh, um, people are asking, what is the purpose of citric acid in spices or in general in, in food? Well, so the two totally different questions because in spices, uh, citric acid, the only, the only purpose is the flavor. Uh, it's, it is the, uh, you know, the, the intensely uh, acidic. Um, it's, it is frequently found in, uh, uh, say, lemon pepper. You know, a lot of people love lemon pepper but the main ingredients of lemon pepper, black pepper, corn, and, and lemon peel, uh, you know, don't really offer much in the way of a citrusy flavor. So that to pump up the citric, you put some citric acid in it. Um, citric acid is used a lot with, uh, uh, you know, as, with wet ingredients uh, as an acidifier, where you have to keep your, your acidic level to a certain point to, uh, as, a, as a preservative to keep... Uh, uh, pathogens from being able to, to propagate and grow. Um, but uh, in, in spices, it's, it's purely for the flavor. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that bothers me with citric acid, it's, it sounds citric acid, well, it must be made from citrus, but it, it's not. Um, the vast majority, vast, vast, like 99% of what's in the country right now is citric acid, comes from China, it's made in laboratories and, the, and it's, it is, uh, it is distilled from black mold, not even not even coming really from from uh, uh, from something that you or I would consider a, a food. A very very tiny percentage of the citric acid in the market is made from uh, from uh, agricultural product. Mostly, it's being made from uh, uh, from cane or from soy uh, or from corn are the main ingredients uh, that uh, that they're distilling citric acid from. But it's just a tiny tiny number of producers that are making it that way. And it's about three times as expensive to get it like that. Wow. Uh, there's a question from, where did it go? Sorry, my thing. Okay. Uh, will it taste fishy because of the kombu, um, Amal asks? So no, absolutely. There is no fishy flavor to this at all. But also kombu out of all of the sea vegetables to me has the, the you know, the least fishy flavor. Um, if you've ever, if you've ever had Japanese food, if you've ever had a cup of miso soup, you know, the, the base broth for miso soup is driven by kombu. That's the flavor. It's not fishy at all. It's just, it is just a, a you know, a rich vegetable, uh, uh, you know, it, it is as close to uh, Worcestershire sauce as you're ever going to get on a vegan diet. Got it. Jesse says that she appreciates that your seasonings and spices do not have any anti-caking agents or fillers or preservatives. Yeah, and all, those are, that's hard to do. I can't tell you how many times we have, we look at each other and say, particularly on the anti-caking, because, you know, people that buy our spices, you will find we have clumps. You got to you got to learn to uh, to embrace the clumps because it means that we're not adding anything to it. It's just pure ingredient. Right. Uh, Marlene says, do you ship to Canada? Mm, no. Um, I, I, I would love to. And uh, you know, I guess it comes down to how you look at the laws, because I know that a lot of people will ship to Canada. But when we look at the laws, uh, uh, they're pretty clear in saying that uh, you know, any agricultural product that we ship across the border to Canada has to follow the, uh, the Canadian food safety rules, uh, which are similar to the US, but it means that anything that I'm shipping there, the individual lot has to have a certificate of analysis with it, which means you know, it has to be tested by a laboratory. And it, it costs a couple hundred bucks because we work in such small quantities. You know, we, 
our lots are five to 10 pound lots. So to add a $200 cost onto that, it's just, just prohibitive. So until we're, uh, you know, if we ever get to the point where we're a bigger company and we're uh, shipping much larger quantities across the border, I don't think it's something we're going to be able to do. Right. Um, and some people I know in Canada have PO boxes in the States, so you could ship to those, right? Yeah, definitely. And we, and we have a lot of, a lot of Canadian customers that have friends that will uh, order it and hang on to it until they get together. Right. Uh, Mona says, will adding rice to your spices keep the caking down? Yes. So rice flour is an anti-caking ingredient that a lot of people use. Um, uh, I've, I've played with it some, uh, if you're going to cook with it, it, uh, it works really well. It, but if it's, but if you decide that you want to just sprinkle it on the top, the, uh, the rice is very hard and very crunchy and, uh, uh not entirely pleasant. Great. Thanks. Um, Liz says, do you know how much potassium is in one teaspoon of salacious? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm trying to think where the potassium, I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I can't even think, uh, I don't know well enough what uh, what the potassium content is in the individual ingredients. We're not required to track that information. Um, so, uh, so we don't keep it. Got it. Let's see. I saw a comment. I think it was from Jesse, how much they love the pepperoni spice. Why do you think that so many of the salt-free seasonings rely on black pepper? I, I'm not just saying this because I'm allergic, but Black pepper doesn't taste like salt. No, I, I, you know, black pepper is just the, uh, you know, for a lot of people, it's the original ingredient. It's a wonderful, wonderful ingredient. It's a great flavor. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I use black pepper in a lot of things and I, lo I love to use it. Um, but uh, I, I think they just do it because it's a, it's a great, I mean, it is, it is a very, very rich. It's one of the richest umami flavors from the, from the uh, vegetable world. Um, Beyond that, I mean, that's got to be it. It's got to be the umami. But it's not salty to me. I'm, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Saw so a nice comment from Karen. I learned so much from Nick. It is Spice College. <laughs> Some oh, of it's even true. <laughs> we should call you Professor Spice. <laughs> So uh, one of the live viewers saying, I'm trying to find a salt-free seasoning that's not spicy. This isn't spicy. It's just salty. And so for me, like, you know, I still use Benson's Table Tasty. I mean, I think there's enough room up there for all these wonderful companies to have their products. So if I'm making a soup, I'll use it. But if you want a sprinkle, and if you want to really taste it on the tip of your tongue, when he, I mean, I kept thinking he had to be tricking me that you can see on the label where, look, there's the label. There's no salt in there at all, but it, it, it really does taste salty. I'm using it in a recipe on Wednesday where my next weight loss Wednesday, I made a provincial patty pan stew and I used it and it was really good. You know, I, uh, and, and for me, I think of the salacious as something you use in cooking and it makes things taste salty. Uh, but at the, uh, at the dinner party that you mentioned, there was one particular gentleman who kept putting the, uh, the salacious on some unsalted chips and, and eating them and he almost couldn't get him to stop. He was having so much fun putting it on the chips. <laughs> well, uh, we have we have somebody watching live named Tommy ba Balsamic, Thomas Allen. He said that they use your products in their Seven Herb Italian, which is their I think their best selling dressing, and the Persian lime and the pumpkin spice. They love local spicery. And we love California balsamic. I had it on my breakfast this morning. Yep. You know, um, we're here to talk about salacious, but I, I believe that these are also new, aren't they? Nix it, Nix. Nix, Mex Mix, and this really cute one, Seedtopia. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of the, the trio we got coming out right now. All three are available on, on, uh, on the website, uh, uh, moving as of right now. The Mex Mix, it's a labor of love. It's one of my very, very favorite flavors. Um, it's a very, very simple blend. Uh, uh, um, and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it is a very traditional Central American, you know, read Yucatecan uh, uh, blend of flavors, but it has no chilies. OK, this is everything except the chilies that goes into a Mexican flavor. It's got uh, uh, Mexican oregano. It's got some cumin. It's got a, uh, some some rub sage and it's got some mil achiote. And for those that don't, you know, you might know achiote by the name Anato, but it's not a very common spice used. It's uh it's endemic to uh, to the Yucatan, 
Uh, it is the seed of the lipstick plant and they're dried and they're milled. Uh, uh, you know, in historic and prehistoric times, it was a very important seasoning. Uh, today, it's mostly used as a color. It uh, provides a lovely saffron to red color. Um, uh, but it has a very, very rich, earthy, umami, slightly tangy flavor that is unlike anything. And when you taste the Mex Mix, and it's it's a great shortcut. You know, I this is, you know, for me, these are the flavors I always use when when I'm when I'm doing something. You know, whether I'm doing Tex Mex or Central American or South American, uh, you know, these this is the combination of flavors that I use. Uh, is the is the combination of flavors that I learned when I lived in uh, in Belize. Um, uh, uh, but it's so simple, you know, if you're making something, you know, you've got a, you've got a couple of avocados that are, that are going to go, uh, going to go bad. This will quickly make it into a guacamole. Uh, you know, you're making a, a quick pico de gallo and you just want a little bit of seasoning to, to give it more of the, uh, the, you know, the flavor of the, uh, of, of, uh, Mexico. This is the flavor that you're going to go to. You know, a lot of times I'll just, you know, put a tortilla, I'll put some black beans and I'll smash them. I'll sprinkle a little bit of this on it. I'll put some chilies on top, heat it up. And I've got a, I've got a, you know, quick, uh, I call it a quesadilla, but it doesn't have any cheese. <laughs> so nice. it's, it's a great flavor. Now the Seatopia, this was actually the blend that we were working on when we, when we uh, played with the sumac. So when you taste it, it's got a really rich, complex, salty flavor to it. Um, the uh, the Seatopia is uh, it's based on an Egyptian blend that's called uh, duca. So for those of you that are looking for a really good duca, this is a really good duca. But we do it a little differently. Instead of uh, instead of using nuts, which duca is usually made with, we make it entirely with seeds. There's eight different seeds in the Seatopia, uh, including uh, uh, pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. Uh, and if you, I mean, I'll put it right up there. You can see. It is, uh, it's extremely coarse. It's a great topper. Um, and again, from a health standpoint, very, very high in, uh, you know, mega acids uh, that, are, that are so important to us. It's hard, hard to get as, uh, as people that eat vegetables primarily. Um, uh, but it's, it, it's all in there. And I, we, we put it on just about anything. And it's, it is uh, very, very, uh, very, very good for you from a health standpoint. And it's got a, very strong, uh, you know, rich flavor uh, for almost anything you would uh, you could think of. Great, uh, Sherry saying she wants to order. What are my top five favorites? I'm not I'm not sure in any particular order, but pepperoni spice, uh, Sol della Toscana, bada bing, bada boom, or whatever that's called, the umami one, the broth one, bada bing, bada bing bouillon. Bada bing bouillon. So those are three. Okay. Um, gingerbread spice and the cassia cinnamon. Those were always my top five, but now this is moving up in the ranks. <laughs> top two now. So yes, the salt substitute is called salacious, but it's spelled S-E-L, which I believe is the French spelling of salt dash. It's just kind of play on word like salacious because it is kind of salacious, you know? So Nick, you're coming back. You, you're, we're just here to announce this spice. There's not a cooking demo today, but you usually come on the second Friday of every month and do a recipe. Do you think you will maybe use this one next time? I definitely will. I actually, we're, we're playing with a couple different things. I'm not ready to, to tell you right now what we're going to do, but I'll, I'll know by the end of the week. So if people order through my link, you'll give them two free small, small is the operative word, not big jars of a salt-free seasoning. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it'll look like this. It's about a tablespoon, which is, you know, it's enough to get you through most recipes. Yeah, just so that way, you know, if you like it. So like if you're going to order the salacious, maybe try the bada bing and the pepperoni or the uh, that sole de la Toscana is like the hardest word to remember. Or maybe if you're already familiar with one of his spices, order this is your sample so that you can see if you like it. Try before you buy. So and if you, you know, you you can uh, you can tell me what you want. If you don't want, we select for you. We try to make the, you know, the selection is always changing and we try to do it based on, you know, sometimes we'll put things out that, we think are great flavors that, uh, that people don't know enough about. Sometimes, you know, it's just something we want to share. So you can either uh, just by going through uh, Chef AJ's link, you'll get the, the samples. Or if you tell us uh, something specific that you want to taste, we do our best. Uh, there are some rare times when we uh, we can't fulfill your wishes. Like if you 
If you want a sample of a, of a blend that we're currently out of and we don't have it blended, uh, you know, it would take me nine, 10 days before I could even get it out. So we'll give you something close to it, but that, that doesn't happen option, often. The people that, uh, obviously the SOS free community has been introduced to you for many years now, but are there people that just come off, come in off the street also looking for salt-free, sugar-free seasonings? You know, it's, it's, a, it's surprising how popular it's getting, how many people that walk into the store are, are looking for, you know, more salt-free, uh, but, you know, you know, when you tell them that they're sugar-free and that, uh, you know, they, 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 they connect that it's, it's clearly tied to healthy eating and yeah, no, it's all, it's a lot more popular than you might imagine. Well, wow. what what is your most popular seasoning with salt and your most popular seasoning that's salt-free? Um, right now, our most popular seasoning salt-free is the Bada Bing Bouillon. And you know, the Bada Bing Bouillon, it is a it's a uh, it's a it's a vegan salt-free bouillon powder. It's made entirely out of uh, uh, dried vegetables, nothing else. Uh, you take a, a tablespoon out of this, you put it in a cup of boiling water, and you've got uh, you got a cup of bouillon. So if you're if you're cooking and you need uh, vegetable broth in a hurry, you've got it here. If you're uh, if you're making some ramen or or uh, you know, any kind of a soup, you've got it you've got it right there. Totally shelf stable, completely natural, and uh, rich rich umami flavor. When you taste it, it's got uh, it's got onion, it's got sun dried tomato, it's got uh, uh, Got a ton of uh, porcini mushroom. Um, it's just it's a, it's a it's a beautiful, tasty broth. Now, our our most popular salted blend. Um, uh, my best guess right now it would either be our Stinson steak rub, which which and actually both of these that I'm going to mention are salted, but they're not highly salted, just lightly salted. Stinson steak rub, which is a uh, 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 it's a, a blend driven primarily by uh, uh, milled ancho chili. In our case, you know, when we mill our chilies, we de-stem them and we de-seed them before we mill them. So we get a much, much richer, sweeter flavor than I think people are used to getting. Um, in this case, the complexity that comes out in the ancho chili and it's just a really, really light, uh, kind of a French focused blend of herbs behind it makes it a superb blend, not just for meats, actually. we. Uh, I like to tell the story that uh, we were doing the full uh, uh, spice package for uh, one of the biggest, one, one of the top steakhouses in downtown San Francisco, Epic Roast House, uh, but they never ordered anything for the steaks. And then they started ordering the Stinson. I got really excited. I called the executive chef and said, hey, how are you using the Stinson? He said, oh, we're putting it on our vegetables. <laughs> um, it's a great flavor. And then the other is our achiote, which is a very traditional blend from, uh, again, from the Yucatan driven by the flavor of the achiote. And again, it's a great flavor. Uh, in fact, I, I predict by before the end of the year, we'll be releasing the uh, achiote as a salt-free blend because it is so good, particularly with sweet potatoes. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. And let's rename it a uh, tofu rub instead of the S <laughs> word you said. You got it. Right. So um, People are talking about bagel seasoning. You make a great salt-free bagel seasoning. Everything but the ba everything, whatever it's called, everything bagel seasoning. Showstopper topper. Yeah, it's a it's it's a good one. It's uh, it's got a strong uh, 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 strong uh, garlic and onion flavor. It's also got some you know it's got the sesame seed. It's got uh, 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 poppy seed and uh, and we put a little bit of uh, of uh, of the the black seed the nigella in it which is you again, know what you could actually almost start putting salacious in things too I mean as as an ingredient absolutely I think the first one that that's going to be is uh, it's it's in bacon yeah I can't wait for the bacon we'll, which we'll have to rename or like. Um, what, what can we call it? Compassionate bacon or something like that. So here's a great question. No. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Well, I, was just gonna say, I was gonna say on the bacon, you and I should just sit long and talk about what, what the taste flavor because I'm thinking the things I'm most looking forward to using it in seasoning, uh, you know, we, we do uh, a lot of times when we have guests, we'll do a, uh, uh, a mushroom bourguignon. 
and to put a little bit of the bacon seasoning just for a hint of smoke flavor, it would be superb. But it, it's not necessarily all bacon. It would be it would be great for, for baked beans, for example. Nice. Again, we're getting a question on potassium. You're not required to know that. I, I, yeah, I really don't know the quantities. Um, it's something that I uh, probably need to look up and learn better, learn more about. Okay, so here's the million dollar question from Rebecca. I've been asking you for a long time. When are you going to have bulk spices? None of these little little piddly jars. Well, so so we go up to a bulk bag. I don't have one here. It's a cup and a half, which is a which is a pretty uh, pretty pretty large amount of spices. Um, you know, reach out to me if you're you know if if you have a commercial kitchen and you need larger quantities than that. Uh, you know, we do have a very small number of commercial accounts. We, we used to have a lot of them and we've cut them way, way back uh, during the pandemic, but also, uh, you know, we've had, we've had issues just, uh, just maintaining commercial accounts. But if, uh, if you, you know, if you do need commercial quantities, give me a call. I mean, if you're worried about quantities downstairs today, I'm working on uh, 180 pounds of uh, one spice blend for a customer. So. Whoa. Do they have a restaurant or something? It's a food processor. That's amazing. You know yeah. what I wish you would have, and I've told you this, is, you know, I know you don't like it, but you know those little plastic things that, with holes, because there's certain things that would be a lot easier for me to sprinkle. Like when I use the sumac, which I love to put on everything, it's just it's just really hard without the little shaker. And, we, and we're, we've and we been looking for them. Um, what I, I don't think that we'll be putting our product in the jar with a fitment, but I, but soon we will be selling jars that have a fitment. If you want to buy the spices, say, in a refill bag and then put it in the jar with a fitment. The issue we have with the fitment is uh, uh, once you put that plastic on the top of the jar, you really, you can't get a solid oxygen seal. And oxygen is the number one thing that attacks the freshness of spices. So once you put that fitment in, you know, people buy from us because they love the flavor. The flavor is good because it's fresh and because we protect it from oxygen. Great. Um, um, so do, do we have this in stock? Because I know I put it on, I shouldn't have probably posted it on social media. Uh, it's, it's, it's in stock. Believe it or not, our, our first batch is already sold out. We're just releasing it today. But uh, we're, uh, we've already made a second batch and, and more is coming. We'll have plenty. Wow. Well, great. Nick, this was so fun. I, I hope this spice does well. I think people should give it a chance because it's really quite delicious. And I'm not just saying that. Everybody that's tried it, that's come over has said that. So um, I would like to uh, have a little a container so people can sprinkle it judiciously on their food and not take it off away from me. We, we use it on everything. And what I like about it is, it, like I said, it's not just for people that are, that are going salt free. It's a great umami flavor with a with a salty, tangy background. It's 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 a very it's a very delicious season. Yeah, and, and so is sumac. I mean, people need to also give sumac a try. That's delicious as well. Absolutely. All right. Well, we will see you in probably like two weeks. I think you're the at the eighth or I yeah. forget, right? uh, but we'll be back soon. And okay, here's Rebecca says small jar salacious is available, but the bulk salacious says it's out of stock. Can Rebecca get a bulk salacious not yet so right now i mean just because we're trying to, to meet an extremely high demand with the open uh we're only offering the uh the the uh, gold top jar these are our new jars by the way they they are bigger than the old jars so by about 20 30 percent so there's quite a bit more in them the uh the large refills which are now even bigger we call them uh, uh plus 150s because they're one and a half times one of these It'll probably be about a month before we come out with that, just because to uh, to be able to, the, to stay up with the demand, we have to keep it simple. But within a month, we will have the plus 150s out, I guarantee it. Okay. And when they come out, we'll also have the cup and a half uh, bulk bags. Right. Well, people are saying people with kidney disease have to be wary for potassium. So uh, maybe he'll get that information. But right now we're just trying to get people off the salt shaker. And that's our job to make delicious spices without salt. AJ, it's great to see you again. Yeah, same here. Nice living in practically. We almost live in the same neighborhood, not 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 too far from each other. So we'll have to get together again. Tommy, if you're still watching, when can you come over? Getting these two together, that's like that's like more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Where do they get that saying? What, what is a barrel of monkeys and why are they so fun? All right.
All right. Thanks so much, Nick. And guys, give Salacious a try if you're trying to ditch the salt shaker. Actually, I read the ingredients to Dr. Goldhammer and he won't approve Benson's Table Tasty because of the nutritional yeast. And I read him the ingredients and he said, okay, not that he'll ever taste it because he has a very bland palate, but he said they're completely acceptable. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Nick, for creating delicious salt-free seasonings. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when my guest is Nicole Dursawet, and she's going to be making shiitake goiza. Doesn't that sound good, Nick? Goiza. Did I say that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That sounds delicious. Yeah. I'll tell her about your seasoning. Take care. Bye. <laughs> all right.